great I am. Love your name, love your name, Jesus. Love your name, love your name, Yeshua, great I am. Love your name, I love your name, Yeshua. You are the great. You are the great I am. Hallelujah. Holy, holy. God Almighty, great I am. Who is worthy? Thee. God Almighty, great I am, great I am, you're the great I am, you're the great I am.
who is worthy who is worthy who is worthy reigning reigning all over the earth chock full of your anointing God
there is another in my waters and there's a grace when your heart is under fire verse 1 There's a grace when the heart is under fire Another way when the walls are closing in And when I look at the space between Where I used to be and this reckoning I know I will never Another in the fire standing next to me. There is another in these waters and holding back the seas. And should I ever need a reminding of how I've been set free, there's a cross that bears the burden. Where another died for me, there is another in the fire. Oh, there is another in these waters. Oh, there is another in the Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Daniel 3, they wouldn't bow down to King Nebuchadnezzar's statue, which we found out a week ago was 90 feet high and 9 feet wide. And everybody, when he used music to his own benefit, the wrong way to use music, he was, when you hear the music, I want you to bow down to my statue and worship me. Well, shut up. No. We're not doing that. We're not bowing down to no idols. We have a heart of true worship for Jesus because he is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He said, throw those three young Hebrew lads into the fire. They were in there. No smell of smoke. He said, I want you to heat this fire up. They're still walking around in there seven times it killed some of his own servants and when they did that he goes wait a minute we put three in there why is there a fourth man in the fire because it was our jesus pre-incarnate saying you can't treat my boys that way <laughs> there's a fourth man in the fire hey hey Fourth man in the fire, fourth man in the fire, surely it was Jesus, yeah. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, the fourth man came and you know who it is, Jesus, pre-incarnate Christ. Fourth man in the fire, the Redeemer and the Savior was walking in the fire with three Hebrew youth. He was walking in the fire with the Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego. The king said, wait a minute. We put three in there. There's a fourth man in this fire. There's a fourth man, even the king with his own eyes can see. The fourth man who looks like the son of God, King Nebuchadnezzar, and, and, and Nabor was his God. He said he looks like the son of God. Thanks for sharing. Because <laughs> there's another in your fire. He's standing next to you. There's another in the deep waters. His name is Lord of the Breakthrough. 
if you ever need reminding the power that set you free there's a grave that holds nobody there's a grave that holds nobody and now that power lives in you and me oh my dad oh my dad left for dead beneath the waters I'm no longer a slave to my sin anymore should I fall in the space between what remains of me and this reckoning either way I won't bow to the things of the come on sing them with me either way Either way, I won't bow to the things of this world. Either way, I won't bow to the things of this world. And I can see the light in the darkness as the darkness bows to him. I can hear the roar in the heavens as the space between where's thin I can feel the ground shake beneath us as the prison walls cave in nothing stands between us nothing stands nothing stands between us and the sun of God Nothing stands between us and the Son of God. Nothing is that powerful. Nothing is that strong that can, as Paul said, who can separate me from the love of God? <laughs> no one. Well, I'm going in early today to Revelation 18. I want you guys to get your Bibles, get your Bible, your media device open to, it's a very special chapter for me because they were selling slaves and the souls of human beings in these days. When Babylon fell in chapter 18 by the mighty angel throwing down a millstone, which is what you get if you're going to keep doing that stuff. Wow. And I taught it many years ago. I'm going to guess it was uh, Rev School, Revolution School, the worship leading school we had here in St. Louis at Destiny Church. Uh, it started in 04. It ended in 08. So I'm going to guess it was the second. It was 05 or 06. So uh, 2006, I'm teaching Revelation 18, and it came to, we can't, Babylon has fallen all the merchants and the business people, we can't sell our goods anymore. No concern about what happened, our righteousness, or the living God, or a big angel just cast down a millstone. You might want to pay attention to that. And they were weeping and lamenting over fallen Babylon because, check it now, they couldn't sell their goods and their merchandise. I listed them out for the Rev School students. 14 things is defined in this chapter of 18. I want you to pay special attention because something really different is going to happen at the end of this narration. We're going to pray for forced people in forced labor, taken from their nation, forced to work for nothing, taken away from their families. Secondly, we're going to pray against those that are doing human sex trade trafficking. Wow. Did you really say that out loud? Can't, yes, I did. How is it possible in the 21st century that there could be people being caught up, I mean, runaways, uh, 10, 14, 16, whatever age, and they're put into human sex trade trafficking. Trafficking, what a, what a horrible thing to do to a human being. So that's why I'm going to close out a little bit early and get right into the narration because we're going to pray. And at the, uh, at the end, we're going to tell you about A21 Ministry with 
Christine Kane, who has been fighting this since 08 or 2010, I think, or 08, they started their ministry. Because the, the biggest nation of traffickers is Greece. Remember when their economy was going down? Well, you have the judgment. You're trafficking people in the Mediterranean and all around the world. They're, they're tra- so I'm not for this, as you can tell. I'm having quite a day here. I started the first hour of my day mostly in tears about how the Lord is is bringing justice. I mean, in a good way. I'm going, God, you're bringing justice in the earth. Thank you. Wow. But in this chapter here, I'm going to designate the 14 things they couldn't sell anymore. The last two, verse uh, 13, on my list, 13 and 14, is they couldn't sell their slaves, the bodies of men, and they couldn't sell the souls of men. It's two different categories. They couldn't traffic the bodies and souls of human beings anymore. Wow, Babylon has fallen. So here we go as we get into our keynote scripture, Carla. The keynote scripture, uh, 18 verses 21 through 24. A mighty angel took up a great millstone, threw it into the sea, saying, Thus with violence the great city Babylon shall be thrown down and shall not be found anymore. So Babylon has fallen. The sound of harpists, musicians, flutists, and trumpeters shall not be heard in you anymore. No craftsman of any craft shall be found in you anymore. And the sound of a millstone shall not be heard in you anymore. The light of a lamp shall not shine in you anymore. And the voice of the bridegroom and bride shall not be heard in you anymore. For your merchants were the great men of the earth, for by your sorcery all the nations were deceived, and in her was found the blood of prophets and saints and of all who were slain on the earth. Now, I just want to point out in verse 23, the light of a lamp shall not shine in you anymore, saith the Lord. Isn't this amazing? The voice of the bridegroom and bride was still there trying to turn people to godliness and righteousness. I find it astonishing that in this chapter, the light and the lamp shall not shine in you anymore. Neither will you have the voice of the bridegroom, Jesus himself, and the bride, which is the body of Christ, shall not be heard in you anymore. We find that this judgment is because of the harlot's worldwide influence, specifically concerning her immorality. Kings and priests have become drunk on her immorality. Now we find that the merchants, that is the business people, also have become drunk and wealthy because of her sensuality. This system will combine five things. Wealth, which is intoxicating. It has its own intoxication. Wealth, a lot of money is intoxicating. And to be at number two ease, is also, hey, we're privileged. We're at ease over here. We don't have to do anything. We have to obey anybody. Number three is immorality, which has its own, again, human pleasure or human flesh. Its own power. Relativism, well, nothing's really right or wrong. Good is evil. Evil's good. Up is down. Down is up. We see that already in our nation. And then five, the freedom to engage in any and every kind of sin. This is Ryan Meegan's commentary, his notes. 
In other words, it kind of boils down now to you can engage in any and every kind of sin. It involves people from every class and strata of society. Listen to this. From the highest government leaders, wow, corruption and bribery, through businessmen and women, it goes down to the everyday common man is totally locked up under the harlot's worldwide influence. And here's my personal note. I told you I taught this to a bunch of young worship leaders, male and female. I'm going to guess it was 05 or 06. In Revelation 18, if you look at verse 11, I just want to point this out. I'm doubling down on these categories so we know what was happening. And I guess I was kind of fine with some of it. But when I got to the last of the list of 14, I came unglued. This was even years ago. Who do people think they are that they could sell the bodies of men and women and slaves? Who do they think? See, we're Americans with freedom. You can tell we're different. And I'm justice boy anyway. I cannot stand. I really hate injustice. You know, uh, it could be prejudicial, prejudice, people being condescending. Don't do it around me because I'll call you out. I don't like it. So as we enter into chapter 18, this is verse 11. I'm being very clear and distinct today. And the merchants of the earth wept, and they mourned over Babylon because no one buys their cargoes or their merchandise anymore. Verse 12 starts into the list of 14. 14 categories of what they couldn't sell anymore because Babylon's fallen. We can't sell our cargoes, number one, of gold, silver, precious stone and jewels. Number two, we can't sell our fine linen and our purple cloth and our silk and our scarlet cloth anymore because Babylon's fallen. And number three on the list of 14, we can't sell, well, we have every kind of citron wood. This is number three. All kinds of things made from expensive wood, which includes thyene wood, which I'd never heard of. But when I was studying it, see, this is the wood that they burn in sacrifices to their false gods for its fragrance to be pleasing. In the sight of gods who have mouths, but they cannot speak. They have eyes, but they cannot see. I'm including this right out of the Psalms. Number one, they couldn't sell their gold, silver, and precious stone, jewels and pearls. Number two, they're weeping. We can't sell our fine linen and our purple and our silk and scarlet cloth because Babylon has fallen. We're weeping. Number three, we can't sell every kind of our citron wood. And then number four, we have every article of and vessel of ivory. We can't sell it anymore. And number five, every article and vessel made from very costly wood, also our bronze and our brass. We can't sell our iron and our marble. I included all those together. Four and five, we can't sell every article and vessel of ivory. Too bad. Number five, we're done selling. We can't sell our articles and vessels made from wood, bronze, brass, iron, and marble. Number six, we have the finest quantities of cinnamon and spice and ointments. We can't sell it anymore. Boo-hoo. And number seven, is in, we have incense galore. It's sweet-smelling things from all around the world and perfumes, frankincense, and myrrh. And when I taught the kids, I said, think about the fragrance industry is a multi-billion dollar industry on the face of the earth even right now. So number seven out of the 14 categories in Revelation 18, we can't sell our incense. We have such sweet-smelling things. Perfume and fragrance and myrrh. And eight is wine. It stands alone. Wine is also a multi-billion dollar industry. We can't sell our wine. And number nine, right behind it, is our olive oil. Our expensive olive oil. 
And number 10, we can't sell the finest flour and the wheat. We have the finest of flowers and wheat. We can't sell it anymore. And number 11, cattle and sheep I put together. And number 12 is cargoes of horses, chariots, and their four-wheeled carriages. So we got 12. I'll repeat 11 and 12. Cattle and sheep. Number 12 is cargoes of horses, chariots, and their four-wheel carriages. And then, wow, I was blown away. We can't sell our slaves anymore. The bodies of women and men. They're there weeping. Oh, Babylon has fallen. At the rising of the smoke of fallen Babylon, you got called out and you got exposed. You are selling slaves. This is what you get. You deserve the judgment of Almighty God. And then 14, I couldn't, it took me days. I just kept thinking about it every day. We can't sell 14, the souls of men. What does that mean? I mean, understand what I'm about to say. What in the H-E-double-L does that mean? That you were, you were selling the souls of men? Did you just beat them down and torture them until they were like zombies or something? And here's what the Passion Bible says. They couldn't sell their human lives anymore. That is, they could not traffic the bodies and souls of people, of human beings. I have no words, you guys. Anyway, I wanted to make sure. We're, we're going to come across it a little bit later in the narration, but I go, wow. What does it all mean? And we can pray and bust it in the name of Jesus. In the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit, which we're going to do when we finish our narration today. We start at verse 1, 2, and 3. Revelation 18. Here we go. After these things, I saw another angel coming down from heaven, having great authority. And the earth was illuminated with his glory. And he cried mightily with a loud voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen and has become a dwelling place of demons, a prison for every foul spirit, and a cage for every unclean and hated bird. For all the nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. The kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth have become rich through the abundance of her luxury. And after all this, I saw another angel come down from heaven with great authority. And the earth grew bright with his splendor. Wow. He gave a mighty shout, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen. She has become a den of demons, a haunt of devils, and every kind of evil spirit. Wow. For all the nations have drunk the fatal wine of her intense immorality. The rulers of earth have enjoyed themselves with her, and businessmen throughout the world wow. have grown rich from all her luxurious living. And Matthew Henry's commentary says, the downfall and destruction of Babylon is fully determined by the counsels of God. They are wow. of such consequence to his interests in glory. See here, that the visions and predictions concerning it are repeated. This mighty angel's purpose is to inform and enlighten the world about this great event, the Babylon has fallen. The angel has not only light to discern it, but has the Lord's power to accomplish it. See, glory to God in the highest. Glory to God in the highest. Babylon has fallen. They said it twice. Babylon has fallen. We sing glory to God in the highest. Glory to God in the highest. Babylon has fallen. 
and the merchants of the world cannot sell the bodies and the souls of men. The merchants can't sell their slaves anymore. We say glory to God in the highest. Glory to God in the highest. Babylon is falling. Babylon is falling. We say it The merchants can't sell their slaves and the souls of men. The merchants can't make their sales anymore. The merchants, businessmen and women. It's the end of the line. Verse 4 through 8. And I heard another voice from heaven. What was it saying? It was saying, come out of her, my people, lest you share in her sins, and lest you receive of her plagues. Oh, I gotta read it again. Take warning, separate. We're in the world, but not of it, man. And I heard another voice from heaven. It was saying, come out of her, my people, lest you share in her sins unless you receive of her plagues for her sins have reached to the heaven whoa God has remembered her iniquities of course he did he ain't forgetting blood of the martyrs and of the saints render to her just as she rendered to you and repay her double according to her works and in the cup which she has mixed mix double for her in the measure that she glorified herself Babylon glorified didn't glorify God glorified herself and loved and lived luxuriously the word is sensually in the same measure Give her her torment and sorrow. For she has said in her heart, I sit as the queen. I am no widow. And I will not see sorrow. Man, even at the last minute, still talking smack, full of pride and greed. Verse 8. Therefore, her plagues will come in one day. Death, mourning, and famine. She will utterly burn with fire. For strong is the Lord God who has judged her. Oh, yes. Strong is the Lord God who has judged her. The Living Bible says, Then I heard another voice from heaven Come away from her, my people. Do not take part in her sins, or you will be punished with her. For her sins are piled as high as the heaven, and God is ready to judge her for her crimes. Do to her as she has done to you, and more. Give double penalty for all her evil. All of her evil and her evil deeds, she brewed many a cup of woe for others. Give twice as much to her, for she lived in luxury and pleasure. Match it now with torments and sorrows. God. For she's still boasting, I am queen upon my throne think so I am no helpless widow she says I will not experience sorrow will think again verse 8 because of this arrogance thank God in one single day plagues will overwhelm her 
Her portion will be death and sorrow and famine. She'll be incinerated with fire. For mighty is the Lord, mighty is the Lord God, who exacts judgment on her. Mighty is the Lord God who judges her right now. Yeah, mighty is the Lord. Yeah, yeah, mighty is the Lord God who exacts this judgment on her. He judges her for what she's done. We cry out, mighty is the Lord. Very strong is the Lord God who exacts this judgment on her, exacts this judgment on her. Well, mighty is our God. Very strong is the Lord God, who exacts this judgment on her, judged by the Lord, judged by the Lord, mighty in battle, judged by the Lord. Judged by the strong Lord God, as we know, as we know, He does righteousness and justice. You're releasing righteousness and justice. Pretty heavy. But this is our journey to the book of Revelation. And Carla picks it up at verse 9. The kings of the earth who committed fornication and live luxuriously with her, they'll weep and lament for her. Oh. When they see the smoke of her burning, standing at a distance for fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city Babylon, oh. that mighty city, for in one hour your judgment has come. And the merchants of the earth will weep and mourn oh over her, God. for no one buys their merchandise anymore. And the world leaders who took part in her immoral acts and enjoyed her favors will mourn for her. As they see the smoke rising from her charred remains, they will stand off trembling with fear and crying out, Alas, Babylon! mighty city in one moment her judgment fell the merchants of the earth will weep and mourn for her for there is no one left to buy their goods and Ryan Megan says almost unbelievably there is the buying and selling of slaves human lives and the souls of men coming up in verse 13 some of this slavery will simply be about free labor for the expansion of the economic system. However, a significant amount of it will be related to the gross immorality promoted by the system. There will be stunning numbers of humans enslaved for the purpose of sexual exploitation within the harlot system. Oh, sounds a little like Hollywood. Just like the pagan temples of old, there will be forced temple prostitution under the harlot system. All right, you champions, here we go. Back to the 14 categories. The merchants couldn't sell their cargoes or their merchandise. And we need to be aware of these, especially the last two that we pray that the Lord of the Breakthrough which is what we're going to do at the end of this time. We're praying, break it down, Lord. Expose it for everything it is. Revelation 18. The merchants of the earth are weeping and mourning over Babylon because no one buys their cargoes. No one buys their merchandise anymore. Verse 12, cargoes of gold, silver, precious stones, jewels, and pearls. 
Number two, no one will buy our fine linen anymore. We have fine purple cloth, silk, and scarlet cloth. And number three, we've got every kind of citron wood, all kinds of things made from expensive wood, including thyine wood burnt in sacrifice for its fragrance to their gods. Wow. Number four, every article and vessel of ivory. And number five, every article and vessel made from, well, very costly wood. We have bronze, brass, iron, and marble. No one will buy our merchandise anymore. Six, we have quantities of the finest cinnamon, spice, and ointments. Seven, we have incense. Smelling, sweet smelling things, including our perfume. Perfumes, frankincense and myrrh. Number eight, we have bottles of wine that are hundreds of years old. We have a quantity of, we can't sell our wine anymore. And number nine, our olive oil. It's going to spoil. No one will buy our olive oil anymore. And ten, the finest of flour and wheat. And 11, we have the finest cattle and sheep. And look, they're the finest horses and chariots and four-wheeled carriages that money can buy. But we're especially sad now that Babylon has fallen. We can't sell our slaves anymore. It's a real category, guys. Keep up. We can't sell the bodies of men and women anymore. And then this final category, 14, the souls of men. Who do you think you are? The passion says, see, we control human lives. And we've been trafficking the bodies and souls of people, of human beings for a long time. But now that Babylon has fallen, we can't sell the slaves. The other translation says, no one buys their cargoes. That is the bodies and the very souls of men. That's the Phillips translation. And the Message Bible actually is pretty powerful. We can't sell the cargoes of our slaves. We can't keep doing what the Message Bible calls the terrible traffic in human lives. Wow, no wonder judgment is harsh. The New American Bible revised edition, well, there's no more selling of human beings then. This trade is not just physical bodies, slavery, but it includes human souls, people's lives who were destroyed through this trade. They sold cows, they sold sheep, they sold horses and wagons. Oh, they also sold the soul of men, the souls of men who are not free. They sold the lives of human beings. And I just want you to notate this down. Ezekiel 27, 13. It just doubles down on what they were doing because Javan, which is Greece, this is Ezekiel 27, 13. Greece, Tubal, Meshach, which is Asia Minor, traded with you 
They did it with the lives of men taken as, of, as slaves. They also did vessels of bronze. That's how they paid for their merchandise. Not right. The Tree of Life version of the scripture says, Javan, Tubal, Meshach, you were traffickers. It says that in a modern translation. It uses the word traffickers. They gave the lives of people and vessels of bronze for their provision and their wares. Now, Carla's going to take over from here. She's, she's going to read about Christine Kane, and then we're starting into prayer. I don't care what time it is. Christine Kane, the A21 campaign, and slavery now. January 7th, 2014, forced labor, sex trafficking, aftercare, awareness. In 2007, while walking through the airport in Thessaloniki, Thessaloniki Greece, yeah, right. evangelist and motivational speaker Christine Kane passed by a number of handmade posters with pictures of missing girls. Astounded that so many kids were missing, Kane did some research and found out that these children were trafficked. Wow. Thinking that trafficking couldn't possibly exist in the 21st century, Kane decided to investigate further. Christine remembers reading witness reports of girls being placed on platforms and sold in auctions similar to those in 18th and 19th century America. She came by stories of newborns being sold into pedophile rings. She decided to do something about it. In 2008, Kane and her husband founded the A21 Campaign, a nonprofit that focuses on sex trafficking in southeastern Europe. The name comes from the organization's goal to abolish injustice in the 21st century. The campaign tries to prevent human trafficking through awareness, campaigns, protect survivors in their shelters, and transitions homes, helps prosecute traffickers, and partners with law enforcement and other bodies to end human trafficking. Now, I want to and say this it again. ministry. Hang on just a minute. Um, the prayer time that we're going to do, uh, I want to make sure I say the name. It's A, capital A, the letter of the alphabet, 21. And it's basically to end forced human labor. And um, I'm sorry, did I jump on your line there? Or did you? Yeah, this, uh, this is really that. home for us in particular because our oldest daughter, Jessica, her best friend from the third grade on, Right. is Annie Dollarhide. Annie went to Australia to go to Hills School and wound up connecting with Christine. And Annie is the one that heads up the A21 campaign around the world. She married a Greek guy, Alex Cardassus or something like that. And it's Alex's job to, um, to t uh, take law enforcement and teach them how to recognize a trafficked person he, he they were running into issues with police were just lumping them in as prostitutes and arresting them as prostitutes or just letting it go just turning a blind eye not realizing that these young girls and young children were being trafficked for sex and so they live in Thessaloniki Greece Annie and Alex and they head up this uh, worldwide venture. So it really is personal for us and home. We're so proud of Annie. And uh, we see her every now and then, but not so much these days. They live in Greece. So in this prayer time, we ask you as Lord of the Breakthrough from 1 Samuel 5.20, that God would shine his bright light into this darkness expose it, bringing it into the full light of day. And we pray for the Holy Spirit sweeping in on top of the people doing this trafficking. Save them right out of their deception. Open their eyes to the damage they are doing to real people. Give them godly dreams and visions in you, Lord. Okay, stop, stop. I'm not going to do the rest. Let's start praying. Everybody start praying. We just read Revelation 18. I'm going to sing my prayer, and we gave you two points. Shine your bright light into this darkness. Expose it, bringing it into the full light of day. 
I want everybody on this stream, if you're watching it later on, start declaring freedom. We're using 1 Samuel 5.20. We ask you to be who you are, Lord of the breakthrough. Breaking through, yeah, you're shining your light in this darkness. Expose it now, oh Lord of the breakthrough. Bring it out into the full light of day, Lord of the breakthrough, we ask you. Shine your light on it now, Lord. Bring it out into the light of day. They're going to be exposed for who they are and what they're doing, Lord. Break through around the nations. Break through. We ask for the end of forced labor and human sex trade trafficking. Oh, Lord, of the breakthrough of things are possible in you, in you. Well, Lord of the breakthrough, all things are possible. We're praying right now, God. Expose it. Bring it into the full light of day. Let thousands or millions go free from forced labor, from humans. Come on, everybody keep praying. I'm not going to stop. Yeah. No more selling our slaves or the souls and bodies of men. Lord, in the breakthrough, keep praying out loud. Pray in the Spirit. Pray in tongues if you have a prayer language. We're busting it out. Yeah. Lord, in the breakthrough, You're bringing it out to the light of day. And further, Lord, we're praying right now. Holy Spirit, sweep in on top of the people who manage the trafficking, who, who, who steal the kids and these people. We ask you to get them saved right out of their deception. Salvation belongs to you, Lord. Open their eyes to the damage they're doing to real people. They still have a conscience. We ask you, give them dreams in the night and visions in the day, Lord. Let the hound of heaven, the Holy Spirit, be released on all the people that are doing the trafficking. They manage it. They make money off of it. They steal people right off the streets, Lord. Father God, break through. Father God, break through giant salvation they're coming out the people doing it they're going to come to you Jesus it is still a possibility we ask you to send the hound of heaven on top of them they're not going to be able to sleep they're not going to be able to eat they're going to have to get right with you it's a possibility Lord we pray for the end of forced laborers in human sex trafficking. Everybody pray. We're praying, Lord. We're praying, Lord, of the breakthrough. Break in and break through. Lord of the breakthrough. Yeah. We see you as Lord of the breakthrough, all things are possible. Set them free. Freedom. Freedom. Yeah. Freedom. We pray. Yeah. We cry out freedom. Freedom is coming today. Freedom is here to stay freedom in the Lord of the breakthrough Jesus he whom the Son sets free is free in their deeds keep praying come on just a few more minutes hallelujah break oh this this was 
built by the hand of God. This is how we can pray more often on these streams. As Matthew, my son, keeps bringing up, I go, yeah, pray right out of the word. Word Stuff gets done when God's people start praying. So, Father, we say it again. We pray. Before we say amen and hallelujah, be Lord of the breakthrough. We pray for Christine Kane, her family, her staff. We pray for Annie and her husband, Lord. Great blessing rain from heaven be upon A21. She said we wanted to see it blotted out from the face of the earth by the 21st century. That's why it's called A21. And Lord, it may not be totally blotted out, but we ask for your remedy right now that these people will be found out. Change is coming. They're not going to be able to operate like they have in the past. There's going to be pressure and light on them. They're going to have to run away and hide and give up their sex slaves. They're forced laborers as slaves. We're praying miracles in this earth, Lord, because we can, and you commanded us to pray this way. Freedom. Freedom reign. Freedom. The freedom reign. Freedom. Freedom reign in Jesus' name. cry freedom let your freedom reign freedom 821 blessed of the lord your freedom reign lord of the breakthrough is breaking through right now lord of the breakthrough your break at the sound of our voices at these words that we say as we pray, Lord, of the breakthrough, freedom is greater, freedom in the land. Ah, ah, ah. Freedom. Your freedom will come and reign. Freedom. Lord of the breakthrough, Lord of the breakthrough, freedom. It's 1 Samuel 5.20. Lord of the breakthrough, you can use it day in and day out to pray. It's his name. Free, freedom. Freedom and breakthrough, Lord. Freedom. Freedom and breakthrough. Freedom. Freedom and breakthrough. Well, Father, we say it now. We took action today. And Matt put up their website. I had some other stuff. It's too late to read it now. But you can go there and see the article. I love her so much. I appreciate it. And I got to tell you, when she came to our church years ago, I think she came three different times. It was very powerful. But uh, after the first time, some people didn't want her to come back. They didn't want to have to think about this. Well, you have to think about it. Don't check it out now. Well, we don't. We just don't want to hear that on Sunday morning. And if some people complain to my son-in-law and my daughter. I went, hey, get over yourself. This is real stuff that we need. We can pour prayer into this and see the Lord of the breakthrough bring change. So, Carla. Cain believes that to end trafficking, we must first acknowledge that it exists. Members of the 821 campaign engage in information campaigns using posters in high traffic and public areas. They educate by going to universities overseas and yes. informing young people about potential trafficking scams wow. such as false job advertisements. Each individual makes a choice to either let it happen or to find ways to fight it. Human trafficking happens when the world closes their eyes, pretends something isn't happening, she comments. So uh, Matt put up the uh, the links um, for for you to go check it out for yourself. In that last sentence, human trafficking happens 
when the world closes their eyes, when real people close their eyes and pretend it's not happening, not us. Well, have you had a good day? Listen, dude, we have gone to the depths. You, you're not messing around with the book of Revelation. You're either in or you're out, and judgment's coming, day of reckoning for every man. <laughs> it's some really crazy stuff, but it's been beautiful. Monday, we are on to chapter 19. We're uh, 22 chapters, in the book, so we're four chapters away. And uh, I'm just going to give you a heads up. Uh, we were at dinner the other night. I said, "Huh, now listen to me. So we had Book of Hebrews in the summer. Pretty cool. Uh, we had Romans in the fall and Nehemiah before Christmas. What's after Revelation? She goes, Daniel. <laughs> I said, wait a minute. There's no pause in it. Now, Keith, my buddy, Keith and Debbie are on here from Warrington, or I guess they're in Wentzville now, or Lake St. Louis. They said, no, you have to do some of the names of God first. <laughs> He said, I want to see, see those special names of the Lord. I said, okay, well, well, we'll pray and figure it out. But we've got four chapters left in the book of Revelation. To me, it's been awesome. And by the way, uh, Debbie and Key said, um, as we were talking last night, they said, we believe there's been a jump in the anointing with you and Carla and the narrations and Matt. And I said, that's, I believe, is because our obedience. Some people ain't taking on the book of Revelation. They just won't do it. It's too controversial. And I go, okay, it's the Bible. Is that, oh, is it the Bible? Oh, yeah, it's the Bible. It's the Word of God. It's 66 books. It's the last one in there. But I, I do believe that there's been a, well, it says it. If you if you study the, if you read it out loud, there's a blessing on it. So I actually have anticipated and have gotten Revelation while we're in Revelation. Right. Like, like last night, I was talking to Lynette in the prayer room last night about the seven mountains as I'm reading it. Ten kings on seven mountains. I go, uh, duh. Yeah. It's the seven mountains of culture. You know, it's the seven mountains that we, everybody's been talking about. It's not seven actual mountains. Yeah. It's the, it's the mountain of government and religion and right. media and education, yeah. entertainment. Yeah, you Wh name which be, became big about 10 years ago, right? Where everybody's writing books on everything else. But yes. you have to, the, the prayer and worship doesn't go away. In other words, you can talk all about it and sell books. But the fact is somebody needs to get on their knees or get in a prayer room or get with friends in a Bible study and do prayer and intercession. And we can break stuff in Jesus' name. Well, I told Lester Summer all this years ago. <laughs> and last time I saw Lester, actually, wow. I actually prophesied to him. And I told him that he was, he needed to do what he was doing. It was hard. It was a lawsuit. Uh, and I said, you need to, to persevere and, and win this. I said, because, you know, that's on the mountain of religion. And God says that judgment first comes to his house. So the judgment's going to come to the mountain of religion before anything else. And I said, do you know who Jay Sekulow is? He said, yes. I said, well, he's perched at the bottom of the mountain of government. And he's getting ready to sprint up that thing, but he can't do it until, until religion is breached. Well, you guys, I see the notes here, and uh, we can do that. No, uh, let me take a look at, I actually do Psalm 23. I don't think I've ever done it on here, Matt. We did it with Psalm 23, like in 2020. I have the seven redemptive names of Jehovah. Each one appears twice in each verse. Like, there's only six verses in Psalm 23. Uh, but, you know, Jehovah Nisi, the Lord of Banners, and there and others, I could do that. It's mind-blowing when you see it. So we'll, we'll look at that. Um, if this is the end of, um, if I can actually think of the month, it's, it's the middle of March, uh, but April, May, and uh, then we can, but Daniel is, is super mind-blowing. Uh, so we can do both, no problem, man. All right, we love you guys. Oh, tomorrow night is 6 p.m. Central. It's called the Holy Spirit River Flow Meeting praise and prayer night, 6 to 7.30. It's nine, hour, nine hours, it's an hour and a half, 90 minutes, and it's, it's a live night of worship where we're singing, we're worshiping, we're interceding, we do prayer requests, all thing. So make sure you tell your friends about it. I'll see you tomorrow night at 6 p.m. God bless you guys. Peace.